In this lecture, we will discuss how to do file input and output in Visual Basic. Up to this point, all of our input has gone through the keyboard and some type of dialog box. So we would have a, a box pop up and maybe some text boxes for the user to, to fill out, click on a button, and that would be our input for our program. Well, the keyboard and these dialog boxes are not the only ways to handle input data. We can also get input from files as well. So what we're going to be seeing later on is that we can input data from files. And likewise, there is more than one way of outputting data. We're not limited to just displaying message boxes that display the results of our calculations. We can also write output to files as well. And what we're going to see is that the way we would read data from files and write data to other files is pretty much similar to how files are handled in other programming languages, such as C, C++, and Java. In order to do stuff with files, we have to use the appropriate methods. Now, all these methods for interacting with files can be found in the file class in Visual Basic. Now, in order to use the file class, we actually have to use a special type of library. So if we're going to do stuff with files, it's highly recommended that we would include the line import system.io at the beginning of our program. This would import the library system.io that we can use for uh, using stuff from the file class. This is similar to how we would import library files in C or C++ or even packages from Java. Now the thing is if we don't include this line, we can still use methods from the file class, but the problem is that we would have to include the system.io in front of every single method from the file class. So for example, we have to do something like system.io.file.whatever method we're dealing with. It's a lot easier if we would just include imports and then system.io at the beginning of our program whenever we want to interact with files. In order to write to a file, we first have to create or open the file. I say create or open because if the file is already there, we would open it. Otherwise, we would need to create it. And this is similar to other programming languages where you have to access the file before you can write to it. There are several ways that we can go about this in Visual Basic, but I find that the easiest approach is to use the Streamwriter class. This is a different class from the file class, but this does help us with writing to files. Uh, this does come from the system.io library. So it's another reason why you want to make sure that you include this library. Otherwise, you're going to be doing system.io.streamwriter all the time. So what we need to do is create a variable of type streamwriter. Uh, this is actually a class, so we're essentially creating an object of the streamwriter class, which means we would need to instantiate the object. And all we got to do is when we use the constructor, we would pass the path of the file in the constructor. So this would have to be a string, whether it is the full string itself or we put it in a string variable and pass that in the constructor when we instantiate the object. Let me show you an example of how we would use the streamwriter class. So here's some code where the first line we're creating a string variable that stores the path of the file that we want to open. So in this case, it comes from the C drive under users, some name folder, then documents, then test.txt. So we would pass that entire string in the variable for the next line. So notice we have dim fw as streamwriter, and then we set that equal to new streamwriter, and we pass the string variable. Um, now I should mention that we could also pass the string directly in the streamwriter constructor. Either one is perfectly fine. And I also want to mention that we don't always have to give the full path of the file that we want to open. If your program and your file are in the same folder, then you would only need the name of the file as the string and not the full path. But the, the just having the name of the file only works if the program and the file are in the same folder. Otherwise, you have to include the, the file path. Now, what this will do when we actually instantiate the object, it does one of two things initially. So if the file already exists, then when we instantiate the object, it will open the file for writing purposes. 
So it's explicit access for writing. Now, if the file does not exist, it'll create the file for us. This is similar to other languages like in uh, C and Java, where if you try to open a file for writing purposes and it's not there, it'll automatically create it for us. Same thing is true here in Visual Basic. Uh, I'll also mention that there is a second uh, method that we could use. Instead of using the stream writer uh, constructor, we could use file.createText and pass the file path in there. It also returns an object of the stream writer class. So either one is perfectly fine. I think we're just going to use stream writer just for consistency purposes. The stream writer class provides several methods that allow us to write to the given file. We're not going to go over all of these. We're just going to mention two very common uh, methods. You're welcome to look up the other methods if, you're, if you want to. One method is called write line, which will write the text that we want to print to the file, and then it adds a new line character at the end. That way, the next thing that gets printed would be on a brand new line. We also have the write method. It just prints the text of the file, but it does not include a new line character. So the only difference between write line and write is one includes the new line character, the other one does not. Let's take a look at a couple of quick examples just so we can see the difference between the write and write line methods. So let's say we start with this code right here. So we have fw.writeline and then we pass the string hello, and then we have fw.write where we pass the string world. Now fw here is our stream writer object, so we're going to write to that particular file. So what this is going to do is we'll print hello in one line, but since we're using the write line method, that means that we're going to print a, a new line character at the end. Now you wouldn't see the character in the file, but the next thing that gets printed would be on a new line. So this is going to print hello world with hello in one line and world on the next line in our file. Now let's take a look at this example here where we use the write method for both hello and world. And what this is going to do is after we print hello, since there's no new line character afterwards, the next thing that gets printed will come immediately after that. There won't even be a space in this particular case. So what would happen is we would still print hello world. It's just that both hello and world will be on the same line and they would just be right next to each other. 